I have been a UX designer for over 14 years and I've loved every moment of it. It's given me the opportunity to travel the world meet some incredibly smart and talented people, build products used by millions of people, generate millions of dollars as a former UX agency owner, and even have the opportunity to do pull-ups topless in a Microsoft ad. Why not? But behind all the fun and glamorous moments, the reality of being a UX designer is very different. and rarely do people actually talk about it. So this video is not to discourage you to becoming a UX designer, but instead share the honest truths about what it's like being a UX designer in the real world. So you can make a better decision on whether or not this is the right field for you. So let's dive into eight reasons why you shouldn't become a UX designer in 2023. Now, the first reason is that it's going to take a lot of work. You have to make a lot of noise to stand out nowadays. Boot camps and their questionable curriculums and teaching styles are pumping UX designers out like Japan's fastest mochi makers. That means the market is slowly being oversupplied and getting quite noisy. What this means for you is that you have to put in extra work to stand out, to break through the noise be memorable and be desired by potential employers. In other words, landing your first job is going to be hard and you are going to be stretched. So if working hard isn't on your agenda, then definitely think twice. The second reason is around conflicting values. The reality is that businesses care about growth, not users. Don't let the title fool you. Yes, we do design for the user, hence our title, product and user experience designer. But if you ask any veteran in the field, they will tell you a business outcome will always trump over users needs. And sadly, a lot of designers struggle with this one. If you can't accept the fact that businesses have an agenda, which is to generate lots of revenue, pay back their debts and their investors, you will burn out in this industry. This is fine. Things are gonna be okay. You have to learn how to balance both business and user needs and compromising on what you think is best for the user will be a daily activity. Now, the third reason is around getting uncomfortable. You'll have to learn new skills you might not want to. As the UX design industry continues to mature, designers that don't continue to learn new relevant skills will soon be replaced by someone who does or someone who knows how to prompt an AI effectively. If you're a UI designer that's used to working behind the computer, you are going to have to push yourself and start talking to customers, run workshops and interact with people more frequently. Now, a quick plug, if you do want to master user research and strategy and have always wanted to build confidence in talking to customers, performing real analytical secondary research and translating them into practical strategies, I have the perfect course for you. It's called the Practical User Research and Strategy Masterclass, where you and I work through step-by-step step the entire process of how to actually manage stakeholders, form strategies, and perform primary and secondary research. There is a link in the description to learn more about it, so check that out. Now, on the flip side, if you're a UX designer that really struggles with the UI design side of things, you are going to have to learn how to polish up your UI design skills. The baseline for our industry is rising. So if upskilling isn't something you enjoy doing, it's going to be tough. The next reason is politics and bureaucracy. Half of your job will be managing stakeholders. That's a fact. Yes, on top of research, UI design, managing design systems, and running workshops, you will be spending a big portion of your time sitting in meetings and managing stakeholder expectations. When you are new to the industry, it's just assumed that you just don't have that much experience and most of the decision makers you work with, they will challenge your ideas. So if you thought designing one version of your solution was enough, <laughs> The joke is on you. 
In the world of UX design, you need to learn how to communicate your ideas, educate your stakeholders effectively, and really be ready to defend your work. Now, my tip for you is to know your place. Understand that there is a time when you need to push back, but there is also a time to go with the flow. So if managing stakeholders isn't something you enjoy doing and you just dread it, maybe think twice. The next reason is it's not as creative as you might have thought. UX design is unlike art. The processes for UX and UI design have matured over the years, and the focus has been to make them more efficient, scalable, and usable. That means a lot of design patterns are standardized. Best practices have already started forming. Projects are generally constrained by strict requirements such as tight deadlines. And finally, nearly all projects are business driven. All these reasons are why most UX projects don't allow for too much room for creativity, even though you see a lot of these beautiful images on Dribble and Behance. But it is important to note that there are other forms of creativity required in these projects, such as creative ways to convert more visitors into customers and tactics to reduce the amount of people dropping off in a signup flow. It's just not the traditional form of creativity that you might have thought of. Then we have hustle culture is appreciated, but not mandatory. Now the tech industry is filled with extremely passionate individuals that treat work as play. This includes both designers and software engineers. These are the individuals that get noticed and are always favored by the business. Now I can speak firsthand about this because that was me when I was still engaged in full-time roles. I am not saying treating work as a nine to five job is a bad thing. I'm just saying if you have goals of advancing in your career, making more money, it does make it harder for you to advance if others are putting in more time and effort than you. So if you are looking for a quick win or to make a quick buck, this industry will chew you up. Then we have your ideas will be shut down. Lots of new product and UX designers struggle with this one. They enter the industry excited, filled with ideas, but very quickly, they notice every single ideas of theirs are shut down. I call this a lack of stakeholder confidence. Building confidence with stakeholders takes time. It takes experience and logical and rational thinking. So if you don't plan on building thicker skin, learning how to build confidence with stakeholders, it's going to be very hard for you. Now, the last reason is that your deadline for your projects will always be yesterday. Oh, you thought you had four weeks to design an input field. <laughs> Jokes on you. In our industry, the UX design industry, it's an inside joke that the deadline for all projects was yesterday. Simply because tech companies, they just work incredibly fast. Unless you're at a large enterprise. If you haven't read the book Lean Startup, you definitely should because most tech companies adopt a lean process when shipping digital products nowadays. The nature of this lean process specifically favors speed to market, meaning the faster you can get something out to customers, the quicker they can really start testing and get results. This means that you will be working with short deadlines and if you suffer from perfectionism or just a slow work pace, it won't be the business's fault, but your responsibility to work faster under higher pressure environments to meet their expectations. Now the list of brutal realities goes on and on, but if you can navigate yourself around these areas and break through the noise, the product and UX design industry has so much to offer. And I can personally once again speak firsthand about this from influencing, freelancing, building my own multi-million dollar agency, teaching, mentoring, advising at venture capitalist firms. I've done it all and hands down, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't do it any other way. Once again, it's tough, but I think with some hard work, the right mindset and attitude, the rewards are pretty damn good. Now, if you like this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the Die Hard fans. And if you want to continue learning, make sure to check out this video and I will see you in another video very soon. Now the last point, I'm getting real hungry. Ah. Now lastly, your debt.